Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I'm an Impressionist Realist Painter, connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor, and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde J.K.L. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. With a tight illustrative hand in watercolor, tin and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. And here we are once again. It is Monday, the May the 18th, 2020, and this is episode 46 of the Artist Friends Podcast. A little bit of a late starting. We had some technical issues, and I'm here with my two best artist friends, Constance and Diane, and we have a guest, an old friend. He hasn't been with us for a while, uh, Mark Barker. So, hello, folks. Hello, Diane and Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Hello. Mark. Hi, Constance. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Mark. How you doing? All right, and welcome for uh, joining us. Okay, this week we decided to do, it's Constance's turn, to do a bit of a studio, what we call a studio visit. And we look at uh, some of her art, and she talks about it and tells us the motivation and whatnot. So let me start to share up here and see if we can get that going. Okay, for our listeners... We've got some of Constance's jewelry, and Constance, I'm looking at a, looks like a silver ring with a, some kind of a pink stone or a red stone in it. You want, want to uh, explain what that is for us? Uh, yes, it is a um, silversmith ring, and it has rotocrosite in it, and I use the gallery wrap for a gallery, a pattern gallery wrap for the stone and also a patterned shank for the ring portion, which dresses it up quite a bit. So, um, okay. Constant or, um, Diane or, or Mark, you got any questions for Constance? I'm just curious. What is road across side? What, what kind of, is, that's the red stone that you said, right? It's a pinkish red stone and it can have marbling of white and Brown in it. And this particular one is just very pink. So, I mean, it's, it is actually that color. Um, but it comes in a wide variety of, of colors. Not colors, but it's always the pink. But it has ribbons of, you know, if you can imagine a gem, when you get the rock, they take slices out of it. So it has the outer portion, portion of the gem is probably hollow on the inside with crystals. So what they do is they slice into it, and that's how they get each stone you know and then they polish down and cut and polish down a stone that's like 13 by 18 millimeters hmm. so yeah what's well, a royal set excuse me it's a royal looking set i like oh, that I, thank you yeah i like to use patterns i mean i can't make the pattern wire myself but you can buy that and i like to use patterns in in the pattern wire because it just dresses it up a lot Okay, let's go to the next one, 
and this is an abstract painting and it's all red and whatnot. Uh, Constance, uh, what's your motivation and what's the title of this piece? Um, it's, and the size of it, of it too. Yeah. It's a 12 by 12, I think. Um, the motivation behind it was limited palette. And so I used just the different reds to make this. And there's a wide variety of reds to paint with. And so, and some of that is even with my fingers. I had rubber gloves on and I just squirted the paint onto the canvas after I got the background part done and then I added other colors and um, just arranged it the way I liked it. I was going through a very rough period for a while and, and this helped me get my frustrations out. And red is not a color that I gravitate toward when I'm painting. So I really wanted to push the fact that I wanted to use red <laughs> and the different shades of red to get their tones, whatever, to get the um, the one painting just with a lot of different colors of, you know, different shades or tones of red. Did you say what the title was? It's, it, it reminds me of fire, like flames. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, It has a number on it. I'd have to look it up. I should have written down what I sent you before I put it up so I would know what the title was. But it's it's red painting. It's a red painting number. And it has a number on it. All Let's right. If I can find it on Etsy real quick. All right. Let's go to the next one here. And another piece of jewelry. And uh, this yeah. is a true wire wrap, isn't it? it I mean. Yes, it is. Um. I used some silversmithing on it to do the ends of the wires that you see there that have little balls on them. <laughs> and on the top, in different views, you can see, but it's a turquoise. And um, I, it's a wire wrap design. So it's all put together with wire. And you use like yards of thin silver wire that are almost like threads, really. So and that's how you you know, you bind all the larger frame wires together with this thin silver wire. Uh, and, the, and these are unique designs, right? I mean, this is mm -hmm. your creation. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I've heard, read different comments of people on, you know, Facebook, social media, and they make comments that, you know, this is a, jewelry making is a craft. It's not really art. No, it's an art. I mean, this is a true art. This is a, something unique, you know. Well, thank you. That, uh, you know, you just don't, find everywhere yeah i've been making wire wrap jewelry for 12 years 12 plus years i guess now um and then i started moving into silversmithing some but i still like to do the wire wrapping sometimes all right let's go to the next one and we've got a, a painting more of a representational type painting i guess a, a landscape here mm -hmm. far distance and a blue sky and uh, tell us about that constance this was right after the rains were moving out and it was had been very nasty and there were some nice um white clouds and then darker blue clouds up, up behind that and, but it's of the pasture here and this is a winter scene so this um, is plain air painting then mm -hmm. yeah okay is this uh, oil or is it um uh... yeah this is oil yeah all right um mark you got any comments or just so I'm jealous that you can do plein air because I can't get out of my house. <laughs> I have to fight to make myself get okay, out of Okay, you two. I got a companion. These two have been driving me nuts trying to get me out to do plein air. And I said, no, I'm a studio artist. I'm a, <laughs> so I've got, a, I've got a fellow companion. All right. Thank you, Mark. I like that comment. <laughs> All right. And let's look at another piece of jewelry here. So this is, yeah, this is a silversmithing piece, and um, it's chrysocrase, which is a crazy name, but it's a nice, really pretty green, and it almost looks like it lights itself up when the light hits it, um, and it's also in a gallery wrap, and I did use sheet for the pendant background, and that's it. <laughs> yeah. So is the metal 
the metal behind the stone or is it hollow behind the stone? No, no it's solid behind the stone to protect so it. That light that's in the stone just from the way the right. light it. Right, it's just the way the light reflects, the stone reflects the light. It's really cool. Yeah. I like it. It's pretty. And then we got the last one. This is back to abstract, I guess, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tell us about this, Constance. This one is oils. And um, I did this one while I was still living in Alabama. This is an older piece. How big is it? It's more cubic, cubistic. Uh, it's, I think it's 24 by, what is the other that goes with 24? 30? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's a larger canvas. Well, not large, large, but it's, and uh, I did this in layers to get the colors pop underneath the other colors. I like that look myself. <laughs> Not everybody likes it, but I like it. Yeah, a bit of a glazing, glazing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. All Let's right. See. Well, I think that's that's it because those are all only ones you sent me. I didn't get yeah. to grab any others. But uh, how long have you have you been a uh, working professional artist, uh, Constance? Probably started in 1992. It's when I was in an accident and it, it housebound me. So I always knew how to draw really well and paint. So I decided to start doing it all the time, you know, doing it, getting back into it and taking classes. And, and then in Alabama, I went about 13, 14 years ago. I, I was not selling that much art, so I, by accident I started making earrings because I had bought these beads and I was going to sell them on eBay, and they would not let me sell them, so I made earrings out of them instead of bracelets, you know, and sold them in the art store while I was showing my art at the time, and they started selling, so that's what, how I got started making jewelry. Okay. To hopefully feed my painting habit. <laughs> Diane or Mark, you got any questions for Constance before we wrap this up? Not necessarily a question, but the uh, the sets, the the wire pieces that you put together around the the gems, they all have such a wonderful sculptural quality to them. Oh yeah, have they you do. Ever tried larger pieces of just sculpture in in wire or in other kind of metals? No, I haven't. I haven't. It's, I've. It's, one of the reasons I stayed small was because it's easier to take the shows and show. I do like sculpture and I would love to get into sculpture, but I mean, I've got the space to do it here, but I don't have the, the know-how now. Not, I'm older, so all that stuff is heavy. And when you take it somewhere, you've got to have help. And what I was trying to do was get to the point where I can do it myself without a bunch of help. So that was I, the earrings just took off in the art store, and I just said, well, you know what? God's trying to tell me something, so that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> and it worked for a while until I moved, and now it's not working. So <laughs> I'm going to go back to painting because that's my first love anyway. Yeah, before uh, we started tonight, you were telling me you were getting back into oil painting. Mm -hmm. and the, oil and pastels. Yeah. Yeah, I know you were doing pastels for what? So you, what did you, did you just kind of got worn out on your pastels? Because you were hot to trot all last year on pastels. I, yeah, no, I don't know. I just, this pandemic hit and I just got, kind of got, I don't know, in a funk and I couldn't get out of it. So I made myself start painting these little, these little uh, still lifes in the studio. And that's, I thought, well, that's, I just want to get my, get back into it so you know i've just stayed away from it too much i've been doing it every, you know how you can avoid painting or drawing completely by cleaning the house cleaning the studio rearranging the furniture that's what i've been doing so i thought you know i've got to stop that <laughs> so i've started painting again this week so. diane you got any comments you want to add to... um so what direction do you see your work going in? Like, cause it seemed like there's a little bit of a lot of different things. <laughs> Is that how you want to continue working or you think you're going to try to go in a certain direction? 
I want to go into the direction of painting, but I'm such, I feel like I'm kind of this, like Gary Vee says, an entrepreneur, and I'm not happy unless I'm selling something, because I've been doing that for so long, and nothing's selling right now, except for what I, you know, making masks and stuff during the pandemic, but um, I just have to get moving with selling and paintings to selling the paintings I haven't I've got to make sure I can paint first good before I can start selling <laughs> I think this uh yeah this crisis has kind of affected all of us in different you know different ways some of us yeah. motivate us to knuckle down and others it's kind of put us in a bit of a funk and I think it's just depends on the individual yeah well before we end this episode Mark, do you have any announcements that you want to make or let me give you a chance to blow your horn. You got anything coming up here pretty soon that you want the world to know about or? Well, <laughs> um, not necessarily any kind of a shows or anything. Um, I just, I just, I do continue to work. I, this has not been a, um, a, a gloomy period for me. This has actually been one of the most um, productive periods for me from art, work, house, clearing, cleaning, a lot of clearing because I'm also trying to, uh, to clear out a lot of stuff so I can make this into a studio, uh, uh, converting a house into a studio. So no, no big, no big shows coming up. I, I'm going to be creating a, uh, uh, some online exhibits uh, of my work, because um, I'm going to start with my redacted immigrants that I had um, over at the uh, Choral Directors Association. I'm going to put that up because I want to be able to show it off to some, some artists in Ireland who might actually be exchanging a show with Oklahoma City right. and uh, might be part of that. Might be. I mean, fingers crossed. Who knows? <laughs> uh, but I'm going to do an online exhibit so that they can see what the what the work looks like. Uh, from uh, uh, the choral directors. So that's probably one of the only things that I'm doing for myself here real soon. Okay. Um, Constance, I'm promoting right now. Constance or Diane, you got anything you want to promote or? Not right now. Yep. <laughs> just kind of, kind of like, yeah, I'm just trying to keep myself motivated to keep working. And as I said before, you guys meeting with me here on Mondays when my internet doesn't drop. <laughs> you guys motivate me. You keep me motivated, you know, because I got to come up with something. I got to show them I've been doing something. You got to keep me accountable. <laughs> okay. Well, for our listeners, thank you so much for tuning in. And of course, you can find, you know, the Artist Friends podcasts on your favorite podcast listening device. I'm on, I'm on iTunes and, and Spotify and all across the internet. And the Podomatic uh, service, plus uh, I put up a, uh, a page at uh, talkartpodcast.com. That's www.talkartpodcast.com. And each week, you'll find the previous uh, week's episode that you can listen to and links to for what we used to discuss, you know, so uh, you can follow along. And, of course, you are welcome to join us. Just send me an email in advance so I know who you are, and I'll be sure to let you into the Zoom. We let Mark join us because he's been with us before, a long time ago, but Mark's an old friend, so I knew right away I let that guy in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you for, to everyone for listening. Thank you, Constance, Diane, and Mark, and I'll say goodbye to you, and you guys say, uh, uh, Constance, say goodbye to everybody. All right, good night, everybody. Y'all come back again. Okay. Thank you much. Okay, Diane. Hey, everyone. All right. Bye-bye, folks. <laughs> Thanks for listening. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Brosnan and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com Constance Bronzan at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S
Supply JKL at www.cjklartworks.com. If you'd like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkl at sign mystery-otr.com. That's cjkl at sign mystery-otr.com. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license. Thank you for listening.